This video demonstrates the performance of an avalanche photodiode using a lock-in amplifier. I'm using a lock-in amplifier um, because of the very low currents involved in the order of few nanoamps. An avalanche photodiode, also known as an APD, is a well-known device. It's used in many applications in light communications, uh, high-frequency communications, as well as in sensing applications where you have very low light levels and where you need uh, multiplication gain in the optical domain before you uh, convert that to an electrical signal. There are a lot of um, YouTube videos as well as um, Wikipedia articles plus other books online which you can refer to to learn about APDs. So this setup on the board shows a photodiode or avalanche photodiode characterization setup using a lock-in amplifier. So what we have here are a few ma major blocks. One is the laser diode, an avalanche photodiode or a photodiode, a lock-in amplifier, uh, a chopper wheel and its controller, and some power supplies, DC power supplies. We also need a light meter just to check the power level that is uh, coming, uh, that is uh, basically the power level at the photodiode. So this is a DC measurement at a certain uh, wavelength. <coughs> so the setup works as follows. We have a laser diode which is driven by a DC power supply that emits continuous light and that light is chopped up by the chopper wheel. The frequency is controlled or the rotation is controlled by a chopper controller and the reference clock which is uh, the frequency that is this uh, chopper wheel is running at is sent to the lock-in amplifier as a reference clock input. The signal from the APD, which is now an AC signal, uh, light signal that is, gets converted to a current, which is then injected or sent into the lock-in amplifier as into the current input. The, the, if it's operating as a photodiode, uh, the APD um, the bias voltage can be fairly low uh, or basically just reverse bias to a low voltage. In the case of a uh, photodiode, of course, there is no multiplication gain, so it has to be just reverse biased. And uh, for an APD uh, to be operating in, uh, in its uh, uh, avalanche uh, photodiode mode or impact ionization mode, one has to bias it, uh, reverse, the reverse bias of fairly high voltage. In this setup that we have, we have a silicon APD which uh, was developed in-house by a company uh, that I helped with and uh, that is basically running at a much lower reverse bias of about 16 to 17 volts and of course it's not going to have the same performance as, um, as one of the more exotic materials APDs but it does have reasonable gain so we will check that as well as to see the characterization of the slope or the uh, responsivity of the APD as a function of uh, DC bias. In addition, we can uh, lock and amplifier the advantage that it is, will not respond to ambient room light, which uh, the light that does not pass through the chopper is basically ignored because it's DC, where well, only the light that is coming through the chopper wheel at the right frequency will basically be recorded on the lock and amplifier output. Uh, the APDs are fairly expensive devices because they require a stable DC power supply. Uh, and they are also temperature sensitive. so. Some of those uh, control loops to control the APD voltages are important and uh, need to be carefully designed. And uh, APDs can be used in uh, both communication as well as in other uh, applications where low light intensity is, uh, is, a, is an issue. And uh, that's why the inherent um, optical gain of these devices are used to their advantage. Of course, there's also noise associated, uh, excess noise, where if you over bias these APDs, so that's where the, the power supply control comes in. So here's the setup. Uh, we have a laser diode driven by a DC supply that is uh, sending a light onto the, the chopper wheel, which then um, the light then passes through that onto the board, on the green board, in the middle of which is a APD, with a, which is part of a bigger chip. Um, and you can see a light uh, red glow on top of the APD chip and um, that APD is then uh, biased right now with 8 volts which is not enough to create any avalanche breakdown uh, or 
any photo multiplying effect and the current input is now uh, operating in the basically as a photo diode uh, is about 250 it's pretty noisy at the moment it's about 100 0.1 nano amperes the power level is about 2.5 to 3 microwatts that is the amount of power that is coming onto the APD through the chopper wheel the chopper controller is running at 298 hertz or so so with the light off or light on there's not much of a difference so right now the light is off as you can see and you can see that the voltage receiver the current that's coming in is around the same uh, I'm going to now operate in this mode with the light off so it's a little bit clearer in terms of the uh, to reduce any stray light effect that may still come through since it's not totally dark here you can see the uh, laser light shining onto the chopper controller is a round beam there which is then going on to the APD at the behind it so now I'm going to focus on the DC bias for the APD and then uh, as I raise it uh, to a larger and larger negative voltage you should see the current starting to increase on the lock-in amplifier now it's uh, about 10 volts and 11 and 12 13 14 it starts to get pretty sensitive around 4 15 and a half volts or so so go a little bit more slowly now so 14.5 14.75 15.1 15.35 It's overloaded 15.65 I think the peak is around 15.75 You can see uh, There's some noise, uh, impact ionization noise also picks up at these higher current levels but you can see there's clearly there's a lot more current than what was there before uh, when it was operating as a photodiode. This is the optimal voltage 15.75 uh, or 15.77 right now and if I turn the light off it should probably not change very much. There you go, the light is off you can see that there's not any significant amount of change in the current that's coming out of the APD we figure that the gain is uh, or the multiplying factor is in the order of 20 to 30 and I will confirm that um, after doing some calculations and checking the as well as the power levels uh, with the power levels that are coming in so I did some calculations on the receive power and um, did some other calculations as well for the responsivity and so on. So the receive power at this wavelength about 650 nanometer was about 940 picowatts uh, that is on the APD itself based on the area of the APD. Um, the lock-in amplifier measured uh, current in photodiode mode with the 8 volts or so reverse bias was 150 nanoamperes on average. In the, the avalanche mode, uh, it was producing around three and a half nanoamperes, and the um, reverse bias voltage was around 15.75 volts. So basically, the APD multiplying gain M is approximately 23 or so. The responsivity in the PD mode is um, roughly 0.16 amps per watt. Of course, there are a lot of improvements in biasing as well as um, optical filters can increase this gain because some. Um, stray light that is not in the right frequency range could also impact uh, the measurement as well as give some wrong readings. However, uh, this the stochastic nature of the multiplication process um, will result in excess noise uh, which is a limiting factor in APDs. So if you want a very linear response you've got to keep that multiplying gain fairly low uh, to avoid distortion and so on in linear uh, signaling. Of course, sources of error, several in this case. I don't have any calibrated equipment here, so there's a lot of uh, errors in 
possible few percent errors in the uh, lock-in amplifier itself, the light meter, there's lack of uh, anti-reflection coating on the APD, uh, lack of filters and so on. So it's also some stray light, uh, ambient room light that gets modulated, um, as well as some noise and in measurement instability that is there in this uh, measurement. Anyway, I hope uh, this demo in the characterization of a photodiode and APD was useful and uh, look forward to seeing you the next time. Thank you.